What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Copart for another Copart walk around. So let's jump into this today with number one on my list, a 2003 Ford Explorer X that looks really good. It's got a little bit of hail damage, but it's got excellent tires. They're Primewell Valera HTs, a full set, 211,000 miles on the odometer, listed as mechanical damage, non-runner. I don't know, man, it just looks too good. It looks too good. I love these high mileage vehicles that look like somebody took care of them because a lot of times they're in good shape inside and out. It's a little dirty, but I mean, this isn't bad. What's it like back here? I can't see back there, so you guys will have to tell me. Okay, it's got some trash, but I mean, it's, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. The interior looks pretty good too. What about up front? Okay, again, not bad. Aftermarket stereo. A little bit of wear on the steering wheel. This is not bad at all, guys. I'm gonna be very curious to see what the mechanical damage is on this. You know, maybe it's got a locked up engine, maybe it's got a rod knocking, who knows. But dang, it looks, it looks so good. Okay, well, let's pop the hood before we get too far with it. I'm sure it's got a dead battery. I'm positive, they all have dead batteries. So I'm not surprised about that, but I do wanna go ahead and check the oil real quick. I know we never do that on here. We never, ch we never check oil, we just start things. But since this does say mechanical damage, I think it's probably worth going ahead and just, oh, look, a bunch of zip ties. Well, that's always a good sign, right? Let's see if we've got any coolant in there. You guys see in there and tell me? She's full. She's got coolant. I don't know if you could see it or not, but she does have coolant. So that's a good thing. All right. Let's find the oil dipstick. And let's see what the oil looks like. She's got oil. It's full and it looks good. Okay. Now, this is the 4 liter. Aren't these known... Tell me if I'm wrong, but aren't these known for dropping valves? And why does this have some iron right here? What what is this? Is that a hood prop in case the uh, in case the hood shocks go out? I guess. Okay. All right. Well. Ah, the hood shocks are bad. That's why that's there. <laughs> that's why that's there to keep the hood from falling on you. All right. Let's go ahead and see if the battery's dead or not. Like I said, I'm sure it is, but. Yeah, she's dead. Okay. Let me get a booster pack out. We'll throw it on there real quick and see what she does or doesn't do. All right. My booster pack is running out of boost. So hopefully we got a, enough left to finish this video. Well, it runs. Wait a minute. This actually sounds decent. This is a non-runner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I told you. Listen to that. Listen to that. She purrs like a kitten. What do you mean, non-runner? Get out of here. If I remember right, this has a buy it now of like $425. That engine sounds healthy. Very healthy. Oh, hold on. Uh oh, I think we, I think we found the problem. Yeah, uh, man. <laughs> Let's see if it shifts into four by four low. It does. Oh, she don't move though. She don't move. So, trans problem. Dang it. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to check the, uh, the, the transmission fluid level. Why don't we get back under the hood 
and check that out real quick. The AC uh, does work. It took a while. AC is ice cold though. It is. Man, does the important window work? No, it doesn't. Power steering works, yes. Brakes feel good. Not bad for one that doesn't run. Unfortunately, it doesn't move. Where is the trans dipstick? I'm gonna bet it's over here hiding somewhere. I take my sunglasses off so I can see. Uh-oh. Uh, I don't see a trans dipstick. Maybe they hid it over here somewhere. No. I don't see it over here either. Uh-oh. You're kidding me. This doesn't have, you gotta be kidding. This doesn't have a dipstick? I've got to be missing it. Somebody comment below. Are you kidding me? I see no dipstick here. Do you? Uh, let's take a quick look underneath. Just real quick. I don't see anything leaking under it either. Well. Figure it had to be here for a reason, right? I thought we just stole one, guys. I was about to go hit the bite now button. I'm dead serious, too. I was about to go hit the bite now button on this. No, she don't. She don't move at all. Okay. Well, can't win them all. Battery's dead again. Son of a gun. I was I was really excited about this one. I I thought we were, I was gonna go ahead and just hit the bike now and bring this one home. Uh, man, she looks so good. I'm gonna have to do a little research on this. I'm not saying I'm not gonna buy it. I'm saying that until I do a little more research and figure out for sure that it doesn't have a dipstick um, and figure out what the procedure is for, uh, does it have just a slush box where it's got a drain plug and you just drain it and fill it? Does it have an, uh, an in-pan transmission filter? I have no idea. I know nothing about this vehicle. So I'm gonna do a little more research on it and I'll give it some consideration. Maybe we'll buy it, maybe we won't. Moving on. Now, for those of you that need carnage in your life, we don't do that very often around here, but this one, uh, this one's pretty bad. Now the hit in the front here, although it's it's pretty bad, that's not that's not the majority of the damage. I mean, she took a good hit there, but it's the other side that just blows me away, man. Well, this door doesn't want to open, so what a nice looking truck this was, but it's missing something over there. That whole side is gone. Now, oh wow. Uh Whoever this was, was me. This is me, you guys recognize this? This looks like my mailbox. Oh man. Yep, I have done this very thing. Uh, the whole mailbox is in the bed of the truck. Uh, you can only speculate on what happened, but that, that was a big mailbox and uh, it's now in the bed of this truck. This is the part that I found just absolutely wild. The, the whole side of the truck is just kind of mangled and and bent and contorted now this is a specialty truck for those of you that haven't figured that out yet um this is an access to mobility vehicle it's a conversion that's done for handicapped people um people that are disabled need a truck like this and it is designed to where the whole side comes off all right the whole side literally pops out and i think it scoots back like a van door it pops out you see it's got a latch right here that would grab it and pull it in and you can see the the adaptations that have been made to the pillar here you got hydraulic hoses so this is all hydraulically controlled there's a piston right there all right so with the push of a button 
this can pop out and this door, this whole side, not just the door, the whole side of the truck, I know that looks like a, a normal door, right? But the whole side of the truck simply folds out, moves out of the way, and it leaves room for your wheelchair right there where you can, you can lock that sucker into place. And then, of course, you've got separate controls for your throttle, brakes, and everything by hand. It's for people with uh, limited mobility. So this is a very, very cool truck. And I have never seen one of these at salvage auction before. Um, not to say that they don't exist, but I've never seen one. So the A-pillar is good. Everything here is good, but whatever it, whatever it impacted a tree or something is still coming out of it. It took this whole thing off, man. Um, I don't know what a conversion like this costs, but in my opinion, this could still be a good truck. It could be. I mean, that is mangled. That's done. That's done. So, you know, you need the whole side of a truck. No big deal. You just need the whole side of a truck, and then you need the whole front of the truck. Uh, it, well, maybe you just need a whole new truck. I don't know. But anyway, there, <laughs> there's your carnage. Hopefully, everybody involved in the accident was okay. Uh, I got some other carnage to show you. I found my Ford Escort that they cut apart. Oh, we got so much carnage here. So much carnage here. I'm gonna save the Escort for last. I'm, God, I'm so upset. I'm so, I'm mad actually. I'm, I'm, I'm very angry that they did that to that car. I've been waiting for that thing to come up for sale so I could, uh, so I could bring it home. Um, but anyway, here's you a Honda that obviously was in a nasty, nasty front end collision. And you can see where they come out here, the fire department comes out and they practice with the jaws of life, um, cutting. Same here, like you can see where they just cut right through it. I, I mean, at the end of the day, the car is not really a car anymore. Uh, there's nothing There's <laughs> nothing left of it. But I mean, it's, it's good that they get to come out here and they get to practice on these things. So in the event that you or someone you love is in a nasty collision, we all hope that doesn't happen, but just in case, you know, they're prepared and they know how to deal with it to get you or your family out safely. This right here is just crazy to see uh, the firewall completely cut and folded, flipped over like that. Um, I'm sure a lot of this damage was done by them. I don't think this thing was in an impact that was so bad that it, that it literally folded everything up like this. Um, what I think though is that they were practicing for a heavy front end impact that would push basically the steering column and the dashboard up on the seat and trap a person under the steering wheel or behind the dashboard. This is how you do it. You cut it down low, they cut it up there, and then probably use some sort of a machine with hydraulics to just push this thing up and out of the way. That, that's wild. I, th I mean, seriously. This was a bad wreck, but wow, they, they made it look way worse. Here's a here's another one. Um, I'm not sure they actually did anything to this one, did they? This just looks like a rollover. I don't think this is... No, I don't think this is a fire department one. This one definitely is. Um, you, can, <laughs> you can clearly see... Why would you do this to a Cavalier? No, I'm kidding. It's, <laughs> I wouldn't have been interested in this car. This car took a pretty gnarly rear end collision. This would have been a little more than uh, I would have been interested in. But you can see they kind of did the same thing here where they cut it down low. So obviously this was a theme they were practicing on, on uh, being able to remove the dashboard, this whole metal assembly, the frame and everything out of the way so you could get a trapped person inside out. The roof is gone, pillars are gone, doors are gone. Like this car, this car gave its life. This car <laughs> sacrificed a lot come over here to this mitsubishi what is this an outlander that's a montero sorry oops uh this one suffered some gnarly damage did they do yeah they did they did you can see they they cut the pillars here 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 and there they cut the roof all the way across so they were just nice enough to sit the roof back on top of this one but that roof is not connected it's cut all the way across here or no it's not no it's not only on the other side they cut the doors and everything off as well. Uh, but the one, the one that I'm so, uh, I'm really hurt on this one. Uh, and again, I, I know they need the practice. I, I get it. But did you have to practice on like a 1985 Ford Escort? I mean, did, did you really have to 
practice on on this when are you going to cut somebody out of a 1985 ford you're, you're not it's not going to happen and it looks like they dropped it on its side i think they do that intentionally too they take cars and kind of smack them into each other drop them on top of each other so they can practice uh rescuing people but damn it man this could have been a decent car um i mean no it wouldn't who am i kidding this would have never been a decent car this would have never been a car that anybody would have wanted or been interested in driving but i was i was interested in it um i've been waiting for so long this car and that 1984 chevy citation i have been waiting forever for those things to finally go up for auction so i could have them this thing said it was coming up for auction then it disappeared and then randomly it came back again and this is how it looked the next time i saw it and i was like why why did you why did you do this it's a diesel what makes this so special to me it's a manual transmission and it's a diesel and i just thought wow how cool oh wow yeah how cool is this yeah she's uh she's dead now so i figured i'd show it to you i finally was able to find it looks like she leaked some stuff out of her too poor car man i would have tried my best to bring this back to life i sure would oh boy oh yeah i mean i know there's weeds growing up through it and everything i guess we could still try to make it run right maybe 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 it could possibly still run i i don't, I don't know i don't know boy i'd hate to I'd hate to tow this thing home. Nothing is intact anymore. Does it still have the keys in it? It does. It still has the key. Are you serious? Well, the key doesn't turn, but it does have the key in it. I don't know, guys. Comment below. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to drag this thing home. I mean, I, I would be junked. As soon as I got it running, it would absolutely just be junked. It's worthless. So probably best to leave it alone. But drop your comments below and... Tell me if you'd like to see the Ford Escort. Maybe we could get her running. Probably not. Next on my list is a 2010 Hyundai Elantra. I believe this is a blue edition. And the only reason I'm filming it is because I rented one once when my ex-wife wrecked my car. I loved it. Like, I really, really loved it. It's got 205,000 miles. And now that I'm getting closer, I can already see that there's... Well, that doesn't look that bad right yeah wrong it, it doesn't i don't see any buckles in the quarter i mean yeah the light is not fitting <laughs> anymore uh, that happens sometimes the trunk it's not that bad guys it's not i mean it's it's out of whack a little bit there's probably a lot more damage than what you can see right here. That doesn't look that bad, though. I think this is easily fixable. Oh, it's got a, a strap holding it down. Well, I sure wish we could see further in here. I mean, you can clearly see it's bent. But how badly is it bent? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, since it's totaled, I mean, it's a 200,000-mile Hyundai Elantra, so it wouldn't take much. A bumper could total this car right yeah probably wrong it probably is worse than it looks but oh man it comes with beer hell yeah all right that's what i'm talking about what is this something that used to have keys in it i think you hang these from the from the window and you can uh keep car keys in it. a little lock box Let's see how it looks Back seat doesn't look that bad. The rest of the car doesn't look that bad. I think if you could just bang out that back and get the trunk to close, you'd be all right. You'd be all right. It really doesn't look that bad, guys. Oh, oh, is this an open container? It sure is. Look, you got money. It comes with money. Are you kidding me? Comes with free cigarette ashes. Lots of napkins. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, this is great, man. I would take this on. Oh, she fired right up too. Ooh, the steering wheel gets stuck. You hear that? 
Oh, oh. Wow. No, that's <laughs> no. Oh, now she's misfiring. Okay. Got that window up there. I, I'm just kind of OCD about windows being left down in cars, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, she's running like crap. Come on, girl, clear up. No. Oh, she ain't happy. She ain't happy. Look, there's more money. Lots of pennies. Lots of pennies. What's, what's up here? Ooh. Yeah, USB dongle. Okay. Air conditioning? Maybe. Brakes feel good. Steering feels good, except could you imagine driving down the road and having your steering wheel lock up? Because it catches. Like, it catches real good right there. No. Uh-uh. Don't know what that is, but that's no good. Air conditioning works. Important window works. Make sure it's all the way up. Let's pop the hood real quick. Take a peek. She runs kind of rough. You know, it could be that it's been sitting for a while and it's got some bad gas in it. It's really hard to tell. That's a timing belt motor. I didn't know that. No kidding. Wow, okay. Hell, I thought by 2010 these things were running on timing chains. I, I guess I was wrong about that. What's interesting is I don't see a timing belt sticker anywhere under, wait, right here. Right here, 88,000 miles, timing belt was replaced. Um, five of 2015. Yeah, uh, that timing belt is gonna pop any minute. 88,000 miles and it's got 205. There's no way, there's no way. That means that timing belt has lasted like 120,000 miles. There's no way. Surely it had to have been replaced. Uh, no, no. Uh, the damage to the back is worse than I thought. You know, that's first and foremost. I didn't, I didn't realize it was that bad. In the pictures, uh, I didn't see the tape either. It's probably just me that didn't see it, but I did not see tape on there. I just saw a dent in the bumper. And I was like, okay, because it's a high mileage, older Hyundai, that's probably why it's totaled from a bumper. But the truth is there's a lot more damage back there than that. The front tires are practically bald. The engine doesn't run well at all. It's pretty nasty inside and out. And it might have 120,000 miles on the timing belt. You add all of this stuff together and it just equals a horrible car. So, nope, gonna pass on this one, guys. I'll tell you what I might get. I might just have to get me a Geo Metro. No, probably not. Last on my list is a 2001 Oldsmobile Alero. How many of you remember these cars? I used to have one. Yeah, my ex-wife wrecked it. She went through a uh, guardrail and uh, she was lucky to live through that one. Somehow the guardrail that she hit, uh, she had been drinking earlier in the evening with her cousin, uh, drinking wine. Well, it was raining. I told her that she should not leave. She needs to stay the night with her cousin and come home tomorrow. But she decided she was fine to drive and she still insists. The accident had nothing to do with drinking and it was simply uh, the roads. Well, she uh, smashed through a guardrail, left the car there, ran, then called me. I had to go pick her up and then I had to call a tow truck to get the car. She ran through a guardrail and it came detached from the road and the guardrail went straight. I mean, I've never seen anything so clean. It went straight through this fender, through the door and started coming out into the passenger's compartment. I mean, the guardrail went went through the car, man. It was, uh, it was wild. The police did end up getting involved, even though she tried to, uh, she tried to get away with it. Um, we had the police calling and showing up and, uh, how they got our information, I couldn't tell you. But uh, needless to say, they suspected that there was something else going on. And, uh, 
Well, you know, I did what a good husband should do, and I stuck up for my <laughs> wife and said, Nope, don't know what you're talking about. Nope. She was definitely not intoxicated. I don't know. Probably the wrong thing to do. But, uh, you know, I was much younger. I really did tell her not to drive, though. I did. I told her not to drive. I just had a bad feeling. She is lucky that she lived through that. Now, this car has been sitting for a very long time. It's got rat's nests and stuff under the hood. It looks pretty good on the interior, unfortunately. Uh, it's a duct tape queen, man. Uh, the mirror is duct taped together. Um, the other side has got some damage to the fender. It's supposed to be a run and drive, though, if I remember right. Definitely uh, quite a bit of damage there. You can tell the alignment is off. The outer edge of the tire here is completely worn to nothing. Uh, this window, duct taped, closed. So, yeah, she's, she's a little rougher than I would like, guys. Uh, this is probably not going to be one for me. If it goes real cheap, maybe, but I suspect there's something wrong with it. If you look down here, you can see all of these dead leaves. This thing's been sitting at least a couple years, at least a couple years. So, let's see how the oil looks. Oil looks good. Well, that's a good thing because these 3400s are notorious for lower plenum gasket leaks. You end up pouring water into the engine, into the exhaust. It's a nasty, nasty deal. You can usually look down there and you can see if the plenum gasket's been replaced. And it has. There's corrosion all over the bottom from where it used to leak. Uh, so that's good news. It's got a newer, um, I believe this is the cam sensor. If I remember correctly, it's hard for me to remember. It's been a long time since I've worked on one of these. I used to be able to do head gaskets and lower plenum gaskets on these like this, man. I could pop these suckers out all day long. It was nothing. But I'm pretty sure this is the cam sensor. It runs like underneath the power steering pump. If I remember right, horrible position. You got to pull the pump out of the way and the, the cam sensor sits under there. Crank sensor, you know, typically sits right there. There's the plug for it. It sits right by the crank pulley. Not too bad to get to. Let's throw a jump on this real quick. I know the battery's dead. So let's just get a jump on it, see what it does. All right, moment of truth. I was wrong. I thought the battery was dead. It wasn't. It's got 12 volts on it, so battery's fine. Ooh, wow. I'm surprised that's not duct tape closed. Good Lord, this thing smells awful. <laughs> it did fire right up though. Ooh. Wow, that's that's not good. Important window? No. Come on, old girl. Get it. There you go. Well, she don't idle for she don't idle for nothing. Yes, yeah, this, this is pretty bad. This is pretty bad. Come on, clear up, old girl. Does it have gears? It goes backwards, yes. It goes forwards. Brakes are good. Power steering feels good. She's clearing up. Ooh. When you hit the throttle, it it's weird. It just kind of bogs down, tries to die. Come on, old girl. You got this. Come on. I got faith in you probably shouldn't but yeah she's not happy oh this would be fun to drive home yeah trying to pop the trunk trunks not responding no see there it goes interesting But see, it smooths out. See how smooth that is? And then just randomly, it starts cutting out again. Could it be bad gas from sitting? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, it could be. This is one of those cars, it's not gonna go for anything, guys. It's, it's not gonna go for anything. The AC appears to at least be trying to work. The compressor is running. The cooling fans are on. It does make me wonder seeing a new uh, a new cam sensor under here, though. That's relatively new. I'm wondering if somebody replaced it. You also see these wiring harness pigtails pulled out. Like somebody was 
going through some things. It's got new plug wire. Somebody did a tune-up. So this thing was having some problems. Somebody was trying to figure out exactly what was wrong with it. And it looks like eventually they just said to hell with it, man. <laughs> it gave up, got themselves another car. Uh, first thing I do is obviously throw a diagnostic tool on it. And I'd want to find out what the code's for. Oh, there's the blower. Ooh, that's ice cold. Yes, that is ice cold. You won't be able to see the movie. Radio works. She's idling now, so that's good. But as soon as you hit the gas, it bogs down. It seems like it's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better. It is. It's getting better. What do you expect for a car that sat for years, you know? I guarantee you the car sat for at least a couple years. In fact, look, here's an oil change sticker dated 5-11 of 2020. That is over two years old at 171,740 miles. It's got 171,557. So most likely somewhere around May of 2020 is when this thing was, was parked and just left. Uh, still though, cold air conditioning, it does run. It goes right into gear, forward and backward, no issue. And although the check engine light is on and the change oil light is on, it's not attempting to overheat at all. Temperature is nice. It's not running half bad right now. It's really not. It's holding its idle. It's a little rough, a little. Yeah, it's a little rough, it is. It's a little rough, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I don't know, guys. It's a, it's another beater for sure. I think she's got potential. I also think she's got potential for rats and mice to have gotten in there and chewed some things up. She is kind of rough, though. That's that's probably my biggest complaint is uh, she's awful rough. I'll tell you what. If it goes for something like 300 bucks, maybe I'd be willing to give it a shot, you know, $300. I think that's going to be where I'm at on this car. We'll do 300. We'll see what happens. If we win it, great. If we don't, I don't really care. It's an old Oldsmobile Alero. I think that's it for the video, guys. We're done. With that, we're going to get out of here. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. And also consider sharing the video with your friends on social media. It goes a long way to help support the channel, and I would truly appreciate it. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Stay up to date on all of the future videos coming. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.